Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another video tutorial. And this time we are gonna be talking about Bifrost. This time we're gonna be talking about how to pour some water from this mug into this glass. And if you recognize this mug, this is a 3D model of the mugs you can purchase with the links below. So just a little plug there, but I thought it was a nice message to make sure to keep creating. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we have this mug and what we wanna do is animate it so that it pours and the water will fall into this glass. So the first thing I'm gonna do is place it above the glass and I am going to move the pivot point over here to the handle, which is where usually people hold mugs and therefore it will have a little bit more accurate animation. So just to confirm that this will actually go in, I wanna make sure that the cup actually is slightly above the glass and then it will pour in. So again, I'm just gonna making sure that I get the right placement and I can always change it. All right, so I'm gonna give myself a little bit of time, about 250 frames, and this is the ending position. So I'm gonna to go to about frame 30 and hit S on my keyboard, which is going to keyframe the animation. Then I am going to start around frame 10 and put it back into maybe this neutral position. So the animation is gonna look something like this. Okay, as you can see, it's flying by, and I need to go to play speed, make sure that it plays uh, every frame max real time. Much more accurate. All right, next, this is going to be a container. This is also going to be a container, but we also need some sort of liquid. We need a piece of geometry that's going to be emitting particles, which is gonna create our liquid. I'm gonna start off with a cylinder, and I'm going to go to the side view here, hit the number for my key, keyboard so I can see what's going on and just kind of shape it a little bit like the mug. This isn't going to have too much fluids. I just want to make sure that it, uh, it has enough. So just a little bit of fluids. The more fluids you have, the longer the, uh, the animation. So this is going to be my fluid. Just make sure that's actually inside the mug. And I think that should be good. So let me call this my emitter geo. Uh, don't forget to center the pivot, delete the history, freeze the transformations, and we are ready to rock and roll. So I am going to go into wireframe mode so I can see a little bit more of what's going on. It's a little hard with all this geometry, but um, I'll be able to see my particles. I want you to select your emitter, and we're going to go to FX, and let's go to Bifrost and turn this into a liquid. And let's increase our point size to about 2, and if you need to, you can increase it to 2.5. So rewind if your particles you know, start to slide off. Uh, go ahead and rewind. Now the next thing we need to do is treat this like a container. So grab that fluid, shift select the container, which is the mug, and then go to Bifrost and treat it as a collider. So when I rewind and press play, the liquid, which are these particles, are now going to settle and then they're gonna start pouring out. There he goes. Now it's not very much going on, and then I'm gonna press stop because I know what's gonna happen. Uh, the particles are gonna keep sliding off. So let's rewind. And we need to make this into a collider. So I'm gonna select the fluid. I'm gonna shift select the glass and we're gonna go into Bifrost Collider. So now if I press play, whoops, I keep clicking the wrong one, rewind, press play. You can see the fluid. You can see that's colliding, and now because of gravity, it's gonna to start to pour. And as it goes and goes, it's going to hit the base, and then it's gonna splash around in there. And you can see that all the liquid is slowly happening. Now, as you'll notice also, some of the particles have missed and are falling down into the ground and past the ground, and these guys will continue going on forever. So I'm gonna give my uh, create a kill frame or a kill plane. A kill plane sounds very dramatic, but what it is, it's if the particles touch this thing, uh, they will die. Therefore, the simulation will continue just around this space and not actually simulate anywhere past 
the bottom and simulate forever and causing it to slow down. So you want to select your liquid and let's go to Bifrost and do Kill Plane. So now when I rewind and press play and we watch the liquid or the particles, the Bifrost, any of these particles, you see how they're wandering off by themselves? They're no longer simulated. Cool. So this is looking kind of fun. I'm going to press stop. What I'm going to do next is take the geometry of the emitter geo and hide it because I don't really need it. It already exists and it's contained into this space. The other thing I want to do is um, see what it looks like when render it. I want to show what it looks like and I'm going to stop right around here where most of the fluid hits. So something around here. Now what we can do at this time is take a look at it as a mesh. So in your Bifrost liquid shape, scroll down, you're going to see Bifrost meshing and turn that on. And you're going to see a relatively high, not that high, piece of geometry. And I'm going to give myself a light, so Arno Light Physical Sky, and let's see what that looks like. So it's a little hard to see because of the sun is placed and the mug is actually covering it, but I'm going to rotate that light actually. So let me grab this light and I am going to rotate it so we can see a little bit better of that um, render. So let me go ahead and hit pause. I don't need you guys to watch me render this. So I'm going to hit pause and I'll be right back. All right. So I like the way it looks, but I feel that I need to have more distance between my mug and the water. So I'm going to rewind and I am going to grab my glass and the kill plane and just kind of scoot it down so I can see the dynamics happen in action. So just going to bring this down a little bit. I'm going to rewind. And I am going to go back into my liquid and tur turn off the meshing for now. All right, that's kind of fun. Let me enable it. And you can see that we're getting some cool fluids, an interesting mesh, and let me render it. So the good news is working, but I feel like it's a little chunky. So I want to have a much more accurate animation. So I'm going to go ahead and press stop on my render. And let's go, to, I'm going to turn off the geometry and what I'm going to do is go to the master voxel size and change this to about 0.15. Now this is going to increase the amount of particles as you can see here and change the shape so that the point size are just about one. So you can see that it's starting to re, uh, give us some interesting reactions. I'm going to rewind and we have a lot more particles. They're just a lot smaller and we're going to get a lot more accurate splash. Another thing that I'm going to do is assign a new material, an Arnold AI standard surface shader. And I am going to make this into a glass shader. So I'm going to crank up my transmission so we can see what's going on inside the space. I'm also going to change my IOR to like around 1.1 so that the refractions aren't too dramatic. Let me go ahead and hit play. Let's watch the dynamics happen with a lot more uh, particles. There it goes, they're splashing away. Now this white area doesn't mean that this is foam. It's just an example of water, uh, of the simulation. So you can see we're getting a lot more accurate. There's a lot more splashing going on. It's pretty dramatic. And I'm just gonna let it simulate a little bit longer so I can get some cool splashes at the bottom. And notice that all the kill plane is working beautifully. All right, I'm gonna press stop. Again, now that I've um, increased the voxel size, that means that my mesh is going to be a lot higher quality. So let's go to Bifrost Meshing, Enable, and you're going to notice that it's super thick. So let me press the number five, and you'll see that the mesh is, in fact, really significantly denser. So let me render it and see what that looks like. So you can see how nice the water is pouring down. You can see how uh, you can see the glass and uh, we can actually see what's going on in the water. And there's a little bit of splashing around, but we're getting some really nice looking mesh. So the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is that I actually wanna see, it's actually kind of fun seeing this in a Lambert. And rewind, dark dome is distracting. So I'm gonna go to show, uh, show up here and turn off the lights. Here's the mesh. I'm going to double check to make sure that I assigned the existing material, which is gonna be a Lambert one. So it's not going to have that beautiful transition, but I, but I also want to see the play blast. So what I'm going to do next is hide this liquid. Now it doesn't do anything to the uh, geometry itself, the mesh, but this will help me see what the 
mesh is going to look like before I render it. So I'm going to do a play blast, right click, play blast, go to the options. And if you want to save this, I recommend that you increase your quality to 100 and your scale to 100. And don't forget to click on this little button. Now, sometimes, most of the time, you have to kind of drag this down, click on save, and then browse. Browse will take you into the movies. So this is the folder that I created earlier, which you guys didn't see, but I always make a project before I do anything. So go to project new, create a project. It will save it in the Bifrost movies. Mug, water, play blast, save. And then I'm going to hit play blast. I am going to pause the recording. You guys don't need to see the play blast because it's going to take some time, but I will be right back. All right. So this is what it looks like. Looks pretty cool. But then you'll notice that it looks like the particles stop simulating when it hits a certain plane. That's the kill plane and grab this. And what we're going to do is lower this kill plane and I'm going to make it bigger so that it it's just below the mug. But the effect's really cool. <laughs> so if we take a look at the movie section, let me find it really fast. But as you can see, the dynamics is looking really nice, which is awesome. I just want to make sure that the water actually goes inside the space. All right, so I moved the kill plane down and I'm going to rewind again. I'm going to hit play blast and I'll be right back. All right, let's take a look at the play blast. So you can see how great the detailing is. You can increase the voxels even more if you wanted to, but you can see how the water kind of accumulates. It's still kind of getting killed by the plane, but at least the water particles stop uh, once they hit this kill plane, which is great. And I'm also going to double check on a different view to make sure that it is not intersecting too close to the geo so that uh, we get a little bit more of the accumulation. All right, so now that we know what the play blast looks like, I am going to render it. So I'm going to grab this mesh and assign the, actually I'm going to assign a new material and it's going to be an Arnold AI standard surface. So I'm going to go into the presets and choose clear water, which is going to change um, the transmission and a couple of other things here, which will make it look clear. And then I am going to label this fluid shader just to keep things organized. So let me save. Next, I'm going to click on this to make sure that I get a view of what I'm going to be seeing. So something like this would be good. This is the resolution gate. It shows me what I'm going to see. I'm going to go to my render settings. I'm actually going to change this off camera because you guys are here to see the final results. You don't need to see everything. But if you guys want to know what I'm going to be changing here, uh, there's a video tutorial that goes over render settings and how to make your movie. I will be taking care of all this. You guys don't need to watch that. And I will be right back with a render. All right. It is finally complete. Let's take a look. And there you have it. Took a long time to render. It's a heavy duty file but you can see that you get some really spectacular results. There are some things that need to be tweaked, like some of the water actually pours out of the glass, um, but the kill plane is working, the geometry is working, the refractions are working, the fluids are working, and you're getting some nice quality dynamics. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. It was very fun to create. Uh, let me know if you have any questions by leaving a comment below, or if you, have, if you wanna see more of these Bifrost video tutorials, uh, let me know by leaving a comment below. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you would like to see more of these videos and keeping these videos free, please like, share, and subscribe. It's a message from you to me, letting me know that you're interested in watching these types of videos and you want more. So please like, subscribe, and share. Again, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating, and I will see you next time.